X chat show and this week we're on the road once more and we found ourselves at the Unibond Premier Club Ilkeston Town. Well on this week's show we'll chat with Jez George who is currently on a profile raising walk from Torquay back to his football club Cambridge United. Plus Everton and England ladies striker Faye McCoy. Okay, now it's time to have a look at some more of your emails. Many thanks for sending in such interesting observations. Let's get started with those. Okay, first email today is on the ladies' debate. This is from Sarah. She says, um, Hi Hannah, loving your show and great to see some good coverage of ladies' football at long last. I do understand the concerns for clubs below the new league being left behind. Although perhaps the flagship of ladies' football needs to be much stronger than the present Premier Division, players like Kelly Smith, Karen Carney do want to play in stronger leagues and earn more money. I do understand their reasons for leaving the country. And next email is from Anna Girdwood. She is a soccer coach at the Texas International University. Well, thank you for emailing us all the way from America. She says, football in England is not a way to make a living for women. Many sacrifices need to be made just to play the sport they love. The US League is giving the possibility for women to earn a relatively decent living with the support and respect the players deserve. England is not there yet. For it to happen, the backing of major clubs would help financially. As for a fan base, it is there, but it needs to be marketed and that requires backing. And the next email is from Mike. He's also based in the States. He says, I am a Boston Breakers fan who is new to the English system, so please bear with me. Just listening to that interview, it sounds like the Summer League would spell disaster for the women's game in England. It sounds that they are thinking of using the old WUSA model, which bankrupted itself inside of three years. One thing that should be copied from the WUSA and WPS, which is not taken advantage of in England, is double headers. All the female clubs have male counterparts, so it should not be hard to schedule one or two each season. That is a very cheap way to get the women's game more exposure. I'm surprised the FA hasn't stepped in and made this happen, as they do control both leagues. This next email is from Andy Parr. Now he's talking about player allocation being capped for teams. He says, whilst money does rule, Man United seem able to get around the transfer window by having multiple world-class players for every position. I would like to see teams having to cap the number of players in the squad for the lead to say 23 maximum, with at least three of those being keepers. In non-league, it could also take away this ridiculous position whereby players move on seven days' notice for an extra 10 quid a week and leave decent local clubs suddenly looking at a poor rest of the season because their best players have gone and they're left with the youth team. Simply because they are a small town who can't pay the extra few quid that the bigger town offer. I know it's not perfect, at least for half a season it would give managers and supporters more of a clue who might play for them for the next few months. And this next email is again on the ladies' debate. It's from Danny Duffy, who is a Knott's Forest ladies' player. She says, As much as I am all for the Summer League, I don't know whether at the same time I'm against it. Being a footballer from a very young age, I have come through grassroots myself and played for the Centre of Excellence. Also progressing through the leagues with Nottingham Forest to hit the National Prem last season. It was a fantastic feeling, but even more so knowing we had done it starting from the bottom. So I guess anything's possible. A major problem in women's football is money and sponsors. People seem to turn their noses up at ladies football as it's not pub as publicised as the men's game. And I guess you can't blame someone who has never been introduced to the ladies game. However, a majority of that is arrogance and if people showed more interest and support, I guess they would be pleasantly surprised with what they saw. 
Well, thank you for your emails, but please do keep writing in with any thoughts you have, either on some views on today's show or any other matters that you think could be brought to the viewers' attention. Also, we're inviting fans onto the show. You can join Andy and Simon, plus guests, on the panel. Andy Parr, a Bromsgrove Rovers supporter, will join us in the studio during March. So if you'd like to join us at Neen Park, then please do write to me at hannah at soccerx.co.uk and we'll arrange a suitable date for you to appear on the SoccerX chat show. SoccerX has officially gone global. Last week we forged an exciting connection with the Women's Professional Soccer League, the WPS. SoccerX will cover the league, which starts in April right through to August. In essence, we'll be bringing you more football news and action right through the summer. We've also been invited to film Kelly Smith and Alex Scott at their new team, Boston Breakers, when they play at Sky Blue FC. We're scheduled to fly out to New Jersey during late May to catch up with ladies football, USA style. We'll gauge reaction from all the players, plus get feedback from the most important people, the fans. A special thanks to Sky Blue Football Club for inviting Soccer X to their Crunch League game with Boston. Stay tuned to Soccer X for an exclusive insight into the WPS League.